Hello everyone, this is Madison with Fazon and today we are going to discuss some really tricky ECG finding which no one in your medical school or even your clinical practice is going to teach you. In old textbooks and famous review books, I won't name them here, it's mentioned that a new left bundle branch block should be assumed as equivalent to MI. But the question is how will we know that this is a new LBB and not an old one? Patients, especially in developing countries like Pakistan, don't have their previous record. But even if they have that, even then how can we be sure that this is a new LBB pattern? For example, let's say a patient got his ECG done for some reason on 1st June. It was completely normal. Now due to some reason, his left bundle branch block got blocked on let's say 7th June. But he had no symptoms at all, so he did not visit the hospital. Now again, let's say he presented on 1st July for let's say some checkup and now his ECG showed LBB pattern. Now should we consider it new LBB and start treatment for MI? The answer is simply no. In my lecture on left bundle branch block, we discussed that normally the right and left ventricles are depolarized simultaneously by the left and right bundle branches. But when the left bundle branch is blocked, the wave of depolarization travels down the right bundle branch to depolarize the right ventricle first and then it travels through intramyocardial gap junctions towards the left ventricle to depolarize and contract it. So as you can see, there is delay in ventricular conduction. As the QRS represents depolarization of both the right and left ventricles, so the QRS duration is also prolonged. So that's how the QRS complex will look like in left bundle branch block. In V1 or V2 it will look like this and in V5 or V6 it will look like this. QRS duration more than 120 milliseconds or 0.12 seconds is what constitutes bundle branch block, right? You can find the link to my lecture on left bundle branch block in the description. We also discussed previously that in the left bundle branch block, there is electrical disturbance with the repolarization too. Since repolarization is represented by T wave on ECG, so the T wave will look like this in V1 or V2 and like this in V5 or V6. As you can see, this ST elevation in V1 or ST depression with T wave inversion in V6, these are opposite to the direction of QRS. In V1, the QRS is negative, meaning in downward direction, while the ST segment is elevated, meaning in upward direction. Likewise, in V6, the QRS is positive, meaning in upward direction, while ST segment and T waves are in downward direction. So you see, the QRS and STT changes are in opposite direction to each other. This phenomenon is called discordance. The point to remember here is that these STT changes in this case, in this case of LBB pattern are not a sign of myocardial ischemia. Like for example, ST segment is elevated in V1. Now should we call it MI? No, because this is due to discordance and it's normal in bundle branch blocks or left ventricular hypertrophy or in fact in pace rhythm, like when the patient has some pacemaker installed in them. Now here is a caveat. Even the patients with bundle branch blocks and left ventricular hypertrophy or patients with pacemaker inserted in them, they can also suffer from myocardial infarction. Now considering this discordance phenomena in all, how will we know the patient is actually suffering from an MI? That's where Scarboza criteria play the role. But before learning about this criteria, let's first discuss the phenomena of concordance, which is opposite to discordance. To put it simply, concordance on ECG means both QRS and STT changes are in the same direction. So in left middle branch block, concordance would mean in V1 there is negative QRS complex along with ST depression instead of discordant ST elevation normally seen in left middle branch block. And in V6, concordance would mean there is ST elevation along with positive QRS instead of discordant ST depression normally seen in left bundle branch block pattern. So now the Scarboza criteria says that if there is concordant ST elevation of greater than or equal to 1 mm in V6 or V5, 
we will give it 5 points. If there is concordant ST depression of when mm in V1 or V2, we will give it 3 points. And lastly, if there is discordant ST elevation of greater than 5 mm in leads like V1 or V2, we will give it 2 points. The higher the points, the more is the likelihood that the patient with LBB pattern is suffering from MI. Now let's do a quick practice. This ECG here shows left bundle branch block pattern. As you can see, the QRS complexes are wide around 4 small boxes in duration which is roughly 0.16 or 160 milliseconds. There is concordant ST elevation of more than 1 mm in V5 which gives us 5 points. In Scarbosa criteria, 3 or more points have a sensitivity of more than 90% for MI. So in this ECG, the Scarbosa criteria is fulfilled and we are most likely dealing with LBB pattern and underlying myocardial infarction. So that's how we diagnose MI in the context of LBB pattern. I hope you enjoyed learning this new ECG finding. It was quite a complex talk. So I suggest that you watch it again and again so it becomes easier. Thank you.